Kitco Mining's special coverage of the Precious Metal Summit is brought to you by Nucor Gold. We're here at the Precious Metal Summit in Beaver Creek, Colorado. Adam Lundeen, he is the chair of Lundeen Group and Lundeen Mining. We talked to him at the Canadian Securities Exchange studio. Here's a conversation in Vancouver, British Columbia. The Lundin family is a storied name in mining. I am with the chair of Lundin Group and Lundin Mining, Adam Lundin. Adam, welcome back to Kitco. Thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. Adam, uh, you've had a recent string of hits, Lundin Gold, Lundin Mining, Philo, all up sharply over the past year in a down commodity market. What's your favorite? I think uh, it's tough to have a favorite, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, and there's companies that obviously you emotionally tied to more, but when I think of the business side, you know, what we're really addicted to and like to do is grow. And mm -hmm. so I think as long as all the companies uh, have growth and we can share price appreciation and continue to grow the businesses, um, they're all in good shape today. So I'm quite happy with them. But obviously, you know, when I think about that, I think what we're doing at the Vicuña district and what's happening mm -hmm. there. And we got a couple companies there. And so I think what's unfolding is super exciting. Talk a bit more about that. Why do you like that? It's exciting. I think, you know, when we were growing up in the business and we never really got into iron ore and mm -hmm. we felt, you know, what you really need to, to have a company maker is something of, of tremendous scale. And mm -hmm. obviously you want grade and you want quality. And I think what we've unlocked at uh, the Vicuña district, you have four discoveries now with Los Alados, Philo, Jose Maria, and most recently Luna Wasi, and then also Lending Mining buying that 51% ownership in Casaronis, which mm -hmm. we, you know, I, I consider it on a part of the Vicuna district. And with that in production, really bringing the district alive. And so I just think what's unfolding there is, is going to be a great basin or copper play that can be producing tremendous amount of metal for, uh, for decades. Uh, Lucas Lundin unfortunately passed away over a year ago. Um, our condolences. Um, how is the Lundin Group uh, company organized now? Thank you. Yeah, I miss him every day. I mean, he was he was more than a dad. He was a good friend, a, a best friend, and a, and a mentor. And we spent a lot of time closely together. I think when you when you think about the group um, and obviously the history of the of the last you know 10, 20, 25 years, he was he was the the forefront of it. But also with that, what the success of the London group is because of the people in the group. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, uh, dad passed away. And before he was diagnosed with cancer, it was always a tr transition started to take place where me, my brothers, uh, Jack, Will, and myself were getting more involved with the business. And he was already starting to step off boards, but he was, you know, very focused on strategy and involved in the companies until his last breath. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, we still have great, tremendous amount of talent in the group. And that's why we continue the success today. And I think, we're attracting some great talent as well. And so it's super exciting to see. I think, okay, me, Jack, and we'll have a, some more responsibility, but a lot of those, you know, people that make the group what the group is, like the, the Ron Hawksteins or the Voitex or the, the Peter Rockendales and, and Ashley Heppenstalls, they're, they're all still there and we're all pushing forward. And I feel like you have a higher purpose now uh, and you want to do it for dad. So I feel everyone's extra motivated. Lundy Mining is uh, returning to Vancouver. Why the move? I think what we're trying to do is, is we have our energy and renewable businesses run out of Geneva and we have the mining businesses run out of Vancouver. And what we're trying to establish is, is really like center of excellence. And so mm -hmm. if we can do that from the mining side, you had all the mining companies here and now bringing Lundy Mining back. I think it's super exciting. And again, uh, getting the best out of people and also you know, they're run independently, but if you have maybe want someone hitting a glass ceiling or someone wanting to do something different, it's easier when you're all in the same town to see if you can shift, if people need to be shifted around. But I think just establishing the center of excellence, it's good to have all the mining companies in, in the same city. Uh, speaking about reorganization, uh, some other companies uh, have been uh, reorganized themselves around renewables. So I think, for instance, of tech, which has been getting a little bit of distance from its coal business. There's also Fortescue, which is uh, kind of leaning into, um, you know, green energy and uh, trying to make steel making more green. What's happening? Is there similar initiatives with the Lundin Group? Yeah, we started a while ago. Obviously, you know, the historic flagship company of the group was really Lundin Energy. We mm -hmm. sold that business to Acre BP. Um, 
but within London Energy, you know, we had big fields that were in production offshore Norway. And what we did was power those offshore fields with, uh, with hydropower and ran a cable. And so we actually had cargos that were certified carbon neutral. And I think it was one of the first companies to do that. And so that started taking place, you know, that plan uh, five, maybe 10 years ago. And when the company was sold, we were able to hang on to that renewable business. Uh, you still had some CO2 emission, even though, you know, most of your power is generated with renewable. The industry standard, I think, is around 20 kilos of CO2 uh, per barrel. And we were down to two or less than two. Uh, and to offset that two, we started, you know, getting involved in, in uh, hydro projects, wind projects. And when we sold the business, we spun out that renewable business into a company called Oron Energy. And so that's our renewable business. And then on the mining side, you know, I think it, it all plays health and safety. Um, trying to cut down on your CO2 emission. I think London Gold is such a good example of that. You know, it's one of the lowest cost producers. It has a great health and safety track record, and it's one of the lowest CO2 emitters in the, in the space, maybe the lowest. And what evolves from that is a tremendous company. And so I think all that stuff plays hand in hand. And so it's a big part of the core of what we're doing. We're, you know, we set out a bunch of initiatives um, and, and bringing down our emissions at, at Lundy Mining and everything. So it's, it's a big focus of ours, and I, I think it leads to, to, to healthier margins. I'd like to talk about uh, diamonds for a sec. Yeah. Um, I, you had um, uh, you had uh, you recently brought back uh, William Ryan to uh, replace uh, Ira Thomas mm -hmm. at uh, Lucera Diamond. Uh, the diamond market has been uh, tough, though. We have a lot of players that are trading lower than uh, during the pandemic. Uh, step back. How does the sector look to you, Adam? I think like diamonds, and it's a small sector. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what's important when you're in maybe a niche sector like that is is okay take away that it's diamonds uh or any business we're in take away what that underlying commodity is and do you make money are you successful do you have good margins are you able to create a return for your shareholders and i think what we have at lucara with karawe and producing wonderful stones you know when William was in a time period obviously uh now we're going through an expansion but you know we had 65 70 percent margins and he also built the mine. And so I think his skill set is gonna be very attractive for investors. Maybe they don't look at diamonds per se, but you look at a business that can do well and deliver returns to shareholders, either through buybacks or dividends or, or just share price appreciation by, by running the business uh, tremendously well. And uh, I think that's what's gonna unfold. But like mining space and the diamond space, there has been hiccups that have you know, made people not wanna look at the sector. But when you start running your business well, it's hard to ignore. And so I think we'll get that at, at Lucar. Uh, let's step back. I just want to look more at the industry. Um, the one that comes up, though, is, is that um, uh, why is uh, the gold sector so fragmented? So I, you know, I've heard this from uh, other analysts that have looked at the space. So um, you have uh, tech uh, where you have a few giants that are actually dominating the sector. But uh, mining seems to be much more fragmented. I think it's... Like if you look at the, I guess the overall capitalization of, of the gold sector, it still feels like, you know, obviously the companies getting the best multiples are the, are the bigger companies. And then, so like Newmont and, and Barrick and Ignico and, and you know, it's warranted, but I still feel like it's a bit concentrated, especially where like capital flows to. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to get gold exposure or copper exposure, I feel like that generalist is gonna to go to Newmont or Freeport. And so I feel like a bit of a concentration on that side. I think when you like look at it, the fragmented space of it, I'm not sure how many junior companies are out there, um, but there's just a lot and you have a quick drop off from the big guys. It brings up the juniors as well too. Rick Rule will say that there's probably too many juniors out there. <laughs> yeah, it's, I know I've heard him say that before. Uh, I have a lot of respect for, for Rick. Um, I don't know if there's too many. It's hard with, uh, I don't know how many there are, mm -hmm. but like I, I admire and respect everybody who wants to, to have a go at it. Like it, it's open, anybody can. Uh, it's extremely challenging. You know, people ask me, Adam, you know, you've had success in junior mining and, and I want to get into the business. And I, what I tell them is I, I felt very, uh, I was very spoiled. I always had a, an anchor investor. Mm -hmm. And so 
it was a lot easier for me on the junior mining side without cash flow, knowing the family was there behind me and always being that supportive. And so I think anyone who wants to have success in junior mining, you know, it takes deep pockets. And, and if you miss time a cycle, it's, it's tough, but you work at it, you make sure you're, you're catering to your shareholders and in, in local communities, uh, you can have success, but also obviously exploration is, is a challenging game. Uh, you've been in this business long enough and it's been kind of an odd time right now because mining has been embraced uh, <laughs> for, and that just has to do with what's happening with energy transition and governments. Is any of it tangible though, Adam? Like, you know, we're hearing about, uh, there has been a critical metal strategy. There has been also the announcements with the Inflation Reduction Act there, but um, are you seeing anything in terms of like better financing, better permitting infrastructure? It's extremely uh, good question because yeah, you see it on the headlines. Mm -hmm. It's what I haven't seen before is it being on the agenda. As, uh, as much as it is today. I think, you know, in Argentina, we're going through this election and pillars of growth for each of the candidates, mining's in there. Mm -hmm. And so I hadn't seen that before. I think, does that translate over to doing business more efficiently? Um, you can get access to government officials and people you need to talk to probably more easily. So you have that dialogue and, and that's extremely helpful. That's where you have to start. But also at the same time, I still find the U.S. Uh, very challenging when it comes to, to permitting. Yeah, you have a bunch of agencies saying, let's support the metals business, but they're not necessarily all talking with each other. Like it mm -hmm. still takes that time to get that, that permit that shouldn't take so long, especially mm -hmm. like for a drilling permit, we're involved in Faraday, super excited about that company. You know, we want to drill, uh, we have private land, and you have BLM land and the Bureau of Land Management. I just felt like they've been uh, a bit slow. <laughs> How are we doing on costs right now? Um, you know, I, I think about a year ago, a year and a half ago, just kind of looking at uh, some of the ballooning capex costs for, for some of these miners. Is it uh, getting better? I think we've kind of leveled off a bit. It's not still like, okay, when's this going to end? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it necessarily come. It's come down, but not. We're not coming back to where we were. Mm -hmm. I still think you know when uh, Jose Maria was on its own and you had that initial capex of, uh, of $3 billion. Um, I think obviously now with Lundin Mining owning Jose Maria moving that forward, they'll make some tweaks, which will maybe increase costs. But I think if you try and look apples to apples, uh, you know, it's, it's not gonna be $3 billion. It's, it's gonna be more, more expensive. You know, maybe that's retreated a bit, but um, you, you still see uh, elevated costs. I would say the commodities have, haven't moved up as much as costs have moved up, but mm -hmm. I mean, we're sitting here sub $4 copper, but I think we're north of $3.70 today. Not long ago, that'd mm -hmm. be a tremendous price. Yeah. And so it's coming, it's bouncing. Adam, uh, lastly on your website, you highlight uh, two charities and that's the Cancer Fund and another for entrepreneurship. Uh, why entrepreneurship, Adam? I think entrepreneurship and uh, when you're looking at the website, obviously the, the cancer fund is, is close to our hearts and we're, we want to make a difference there with, when it comes to brain cancer. On the entrepreneurship, uh, is really tied to what the Lundin Foundation is trying to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we want to support entrepreneurs uh, in local communities around mine sites. And so they can start businesses that are going to outlast the mine because all these deposits are, are fine. They're, they're, they're the big ones get bigger and they continue, but every mine is gonna stop at some point. If you can help local entrepreneurs with businesses that are gonna outlast the mine, I think that's, that's, that's the ultimate win. I think that's super exciting. And so that's what, what we try and do. And that's a big emphasis. And we've, we've had success with it. And, and Aaron Johnstone running the, the foundation is doing a tremendous job. Adam, thanks for speaking with Kitco. Thanks, Michael, it's been a pleasure. My name is Michael McRae with Kitco Mining. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Precious Metal Summit is brought to you by Nucor Gold.